Hi, I'm Mark from Onki. Today I'm going to show you the first eight simple example programs from the Cosmo SDK. Make sure you have the Cosmo SDK installed and set up and the example programs downloaded. If you haven't done this already, please see our previous video. You can use any text editor to view and edit the Cosmo SDK programs. Today I'm going to be using PyCharm. You can download that from jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. So when I open that up, I'm going to open a project and I'm going to select the folder where I've extracted the example programs and hit open. So you'll then see on the left all of the contents of that. And today we're going to be looking at the tutorials folder and in particular the 01 basics section of that. So the first file is hello world.py. Hello world programs are always the simplest example program you can have in a programming language. So here you'll see it's pretty short. As for all Cosmo programs, we need to import Cosmo at the start to get access to all of Cosmo's SDK. We then have this def Cosmo program. This defines a function, which is going to be where all of our program lives. And it takes in a robot that we can access via the robot variable. Uh, and that's a, a Cosmo robot object. The only other thing really is the contents of that program, which is then we tell the robot to say some text which in this case is hello world, and then we wait for that action to complete. So if I run that now, in terminal, I'm going to go to wherever I've downloaded and extracted the Cosmo example programs, and then in there I can type ls-l, and I'll get a list of all of the files and directories in there. I'm going to do cd to change directory into the tutorial subfolder. In there we can see that we have several other folders, so I'm going to go into 01 underscore basics. Then if I do a list again, you can see the files in there. If I do dot slash 01, press tab to auto-complete the rest of the file name, I can now run the Hello World program on Cosmo. Hello world. And Cosmo says hello world. So if we go back and then look at the next file, it's very similar again. Uh, this time, as well as importing Cosmo, we're also importing a couple of helper classes. Uh, you don't need to worry about this too much. This just allows us an easy way of specifying the distance that Cosmo is going to drive and the speed. So then the structure of the program is very similar to last time, but now we're going to do two things. So first we're going to tell Cosmo to drive straight for a distance in millimeters of 150 millimeters at a speed of 50 millimeters per second and we're going to wait for that to complete. Once that's done, we're going to ask for Cosmo to turn in place 90 degrees. Uh, this will turn 90 degrees to the left. If you wanted to turn 90 degrees to the right, you'd pass in minus 90. So again, I can run this on Cosmo. We do dot slash O2 and tab, and then hit enter. Cosmo will drive forwards, and then turn to his left. So our next program introduces a for loop. For loops are a very common structure in, in many programming languages, and they allow you to repeat the same block of code again and again several times. And you can also use the, the value of that number, which we're doing here. So for i in range 1 to 6, it's going to give us starting from 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, and as long as we're less than 6. So it won't go all the way to 6. So if I turn Cosmo to face me, then inside each loop, we're going to have Cosmo say that text. We need to convert the number 1, 2, 3, etc. to a string. And then we wait for that to complete. So again, in terminal, I do dot slash 03. And he'll now uh, count from 1 to 5. Now the next example program, 04 Drive Square, combines a couple of those things you've just learned to make Cosmo drive in a square. So pretty similar to the previous ones. Uh, in this case we don't actually need the number in the for loop, we just need to do it four times. Uh, so we name the variable with an underscore, but you'll see here he'll drive straight for a distance of 150 millimeters, uh, 
at a speed of 50 millimeters per second and wait for him to complete that. And then we'll tell him to turn 90 degrees to his left and complete that. And then he'll repeat again four times. So I'll move so he's got plenty of space. And then as before, go and run from the terminal. Drive, turn, drive, turn, and complete a square shape. Now the next example program, 05 Motors, introduces us to some lower level controls of Cosmo, where you can control the actual motors driving his wheels, lift and head. This gives us fine grained control and uh, it's a lot easier to do multiple things at once in this way. So this program is going to tell Cosmo to move his head uh, minus five radians per second. So that's going to move his head fairly quickly downwards. And we're going to do basically the same thing on his lift. So move lift minus five, it's going to lower his lift fairly quickly. Then we're going to tell Cosmo to drive his wheels to drive the left wheel at 25 millimeters per second and the right wheel at 50 millimeters per second. So this should cause Cosmo to turn slowly to his left whilst also driving forwards. Uh, and then we're going to sleep for three seconds. So you should see his head, lift and wheels all happening at the same time. Once that sleep is finished, then we're going to tell Cosmo to move his head five radians per second that's going to move his head upwards quite quickly and then the lift is going to do the same thing and then we're going to drive the wheels with 50 millimeters per second with the left wheel and minus 50 millimeters per second with the right wheel this should make Cosmo turn on the spot to the right so the next program 06 sing scales is another extension of the for loops we've used earlier and the count example where he's counted from one to five. Uh, but this time, Cosmo is going to sing the scale, so do, re, mi, fa, so. Uh, and we're going to increase the pitch over those each of those notes. And whilst he's doing this, we're also going to uh, raise his lift and his head in time with his speech. Uh, so first we'll need to move the head down and the lift to the bottom and wait for both of those to complete. Now the next program, 07 Backpack Lights. We're going to show how you can control Cosmo's backpack lights on his back. And we're going to first make them red we're going to wait for two seconds so you can see that. Then we're going to switch them to green, wait another two seconds. Then blue, another two seconds. And then we're going to turn them off and wait another two seconds. So first they're red, then green, then blue, and then off. And then finally the program exits. Our last basic example is how you can play animations on Cosmo. So the first method is play an animation via a trigger. This is the recommended way to play animations on Cosmo. Uh, these triggers should be available across all versions of the SDK and can add variety so one trigger might map to multiple animations so internally the system can play the best one based on Cosmo's mood or make sure he doesn't play the same animation each time to add variety. Then we're going to show you a slightly lower level way of playing an animation via a name we can't guarantee that the, every named animation will exist across each version of the SDK, so we don't generally recommend this, but if you want fine-grained control, this is a way you can do that. So you should now see two separate animations playing on Cosmo. Okay, now we've run through the first eight example programs. As you can see, it's fairly straightforward and hopefully simpler than you might have thought. Please visit developer.onki.com to view our detailed documentation, ask questions on our forums, and view other people's projects in our showcase. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.